Hey everyone, today Michelle and I are gonna let you know the five things that nobody tells you about e-bikes. As always, if you can think of any we've missed, then don't forget to let us know in the comments. Point number one, just like any other piece of technology, the lithium ion batteries found in most e-bikes will require some care and attention to get the most life from them. The first thing to watch out for is not storing your battery somewhere it can be subject to large fluctuations in temperature or where it might get too cold. For example, a cold garage that heats up during the day once the sun is out or the boot of your car on a hot summer's day. In an ideal world, you should take your battery out of your bike once you finish riding and leave it somewhere where the temperature is more moderate and stable. For example, a house or an apartment. Or if you're really lucky, you may be able to bring the whole bike inside with you. Next up, if you're planning to store your e-bike and not use it for a decent chunk of time, then make sure you don't store it with the battery fully discharged. Instead, look to store it at around 50 to 60% charge and periodically top it up if you're planning to leave it for months on end. When you do charge the battery, it's best to do this at room temperature as well. So try not to leave it on charge overnight in your cold garage. Finally, when you get back from a ride, give your battery a chance to settle and cool down before charging it again. Around half an hour should do the trick. Number two is that claimed range and real world range are often quite different. Range is often one of the first things we look at when deciding which e-bike to buy. It's also something manufacturers will make a lot of noise about in their marketing material. However, manufacturers claim ranges are done in optimal conditions. For example, at ambient temperature, on a flat, even surface, and with no wind. As you'd expect, out in the real world, conditions are rarely perfect. So things like rider weight, air temperature, wind direction, ride elevation, tire pressure, and even what you're wearing may all reduce your range. That's not to say manufacturers are trying to dupe you. They have to set a standard by which to test. And that will obviously be a best case scenario. But just remember, if your bike says it's gonna get 80 miles on a full charge, chances are out in the real world, you'll probably get less. Number three is lever adjustment. When you first jump on an e-bike, be that road or mountain bike, chances are you're gonna to need to adjust your brake levers. Fortunately, that is a really easy thing to do. But what many people don't realize is that if you move your levers fairly far inbound on the bars, you get a much better feel and performance from your brakes. So I've already loosened this lever off. And as you can see in its original position, if I go for one finger braking, which is my finger right on the end like that, which is a really good idea to do with disc brakes, my hand is kind of hanging off the edge. And this kind of encourages people to do two finger braking, which I don't quite like as much. So with my loosened off lever, if I move it inbound, a fair old way, I've gone like an inch there, put my hand in the new position, and as you can see, one finger braking, and it's nice and central on the grips, which I find much nicer. Obviously, don't forget when you've got the position you want to tighten your brake lever back up with your Allen key. E-bikes provide you with a lot of power, and while this power is absolutely a good thing, it can mean there's lots more strain being put on your drivetrain particularly on mid-drive motors. So you need to take good care of your drivetrain. And fortunately, this is really easy to do. Group set manufacturers have cottoned onto this. And in some cases, they've made their products stronger, which does help with making them last longer. But it's still really good practice to be extra attentive when looking after the drivetrain on your e-bike. Fortunately, this is a super easy process to do. I recommend regularly cleaning your chain and using a high quality lube to keep things running smoothly. Just remember, you don't need to drench your chain. A light coating all over will do. And when it comes to cleaning, this muck off chain cleaner has worked really well for me. Finally, it's really important to keep an eye on your chain wear and replace it when needed. A worn chain will wear out more expensive parts of your drivetrain, like your cassette and chain ring quicker, meaning you'll have a costly bill because you'll have to replace all three at the same time. Whereas if you replace the chain as soon as it becomes too worn, then you should get a lot more life out of your cassette and chain rings before they need replacing, which in the end saves you some money. Our final point, wider tires are usually better, but watch those pressures. 
It's possibly a hangover from the old school days of road racing, but the conventional wisdom used to be a narrower tyre pumped up as hard as possible was best. Thankfully, we've now seen sense, and you'll now find most e-bikes and normal bikes come with much wider tyres. Wider tyres have the usual benefits of being more comfortable, grippier, and in some cases faster than their more narrow counterparts. But if you want to get the best out of them, you need to get the pressures right. As the wider the tyre, the less pressure you'll need. I weigh around 65 kilos and usually go for 40 to 50 psi on these 40c specialised Pathfinder Sport tyres. On a road bike with narrow tyres, I'd go higher. I'd go for around 70 to 80 psi. Finding the right tyre pressure can take time and effort. You want to reduce it enough so that it's comfortable and can deform over lumps and bumps in the road. But you don't want to reduce it so much the tyre offers no support. This could increase your chances of a pinch puncture and the tyre could fold, causing you to crash. So take your time and experiment. Sometimes you only need to adjust the tyres by a few psi either way to get them feeling just right. But I often found I could go quite a bit lower than I thought. So those are the five things nobody tells you about e-bikes. We hope you found this video useful and as always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. And goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.